Hey, it's Heather from the Nature Center. I'm so excited that you're joining us for the virtual Hummingbird Celebration, a partnership between Warner Park Nature Center, Friends of Warner Parks, and Metro Parks of Nashville Davidson County. I'm excited to introduce my friend Cindy Routledge of Southeastern Avian Research. Cindy is going to be sharing with us her adventures banding wintering hummingbirds. Yes, I said wintering. She's gonna give us some reasons for leaving a hummingbird feeder out in winter and then share her adventures banding black chin, rufus, and even a Mexican violet-eared hummingbird. Enjoy. Lots of times I get questions, when should I take my feeder down? Grandma told me that I need to take my feeder down at Halloween or by October 15th because if I don't take my feeder down, those hummingbirds are going to stay and they're going to die. They're going to succumb to the cold. Well, I'm here to tell you that Grandma was wrong. Uh, no amount of food will keep your birds here during the winter unless they uh, decide to stay because they can make a living. And what I mean by when I say make a living is that they can find nectar and they can find insects and so on and so forth. But most birds will depart um, when their hormones tell them to go and they will head to, down into the Yucatan Peninsula. However, if you choose to leave your feeder up you might be one of the lucky few who get one of our western birds. We have 16 species of hummingbirds that call the uh, North America home and 15 of them are west of the Mississippi and those are the birds that are known as our winter hummingbirds. Um, if you choose to leave a feeder up you might get one of those vagrant western birds. And it was long thought that these birds might be lost or that they were sick or that there was something wrong with them. But by banding them and following them for near 40 years now, we've discovered that the, there's nothing wrong with these birds, that birds are efficient. And if they can come to Tennessee or Alabama or Mississippi or Louisiana and they can find nectar and insects, why go all the way down in the Yucatan Peninsula and chance that migration journey? So you can leave your feeder up if you choose um, uh, and you might get one of these birds. This is called a Rufus Hummingbird. Uh, he is our most frequent winter bird here in Tennessee. He is known as uh, one of the feistiest of the hummingbirds. He's a little bit smaller than a ruby throat um, and he commutes annually between Mexico and Alaska. He makes one of the longest flights relative to body length of any bird in the world. Um, so you might, you might have him at your feeder if you choose to leave up a winter feeder. Or you might get one of these. This is the second most frequent visitor and it is called a black-chinned hummingbird. Its breeding territory is the western U.S., northern Mexico, and down into British Columbia. And they look young and females look exactly like your ruby throats and it's not until we get them in our hands that we can identify them as black chins. So if you think have a ruby throat, what you think may be a ruby throat at your feeder because you've left a feeder up and it's after November 15th, I certainly want to hear from you because it would could be one of these black chinned hummingbirds. We, you could also have any one of these birds as well. The bird in the left upper corner is an Allen's hummingbird. It breeds in a narrow strip of coastal California and southern Oregon. Next to it is a, a lovely bird called a broad-tailed hummingbird. And this guy breeds in the mountains of California to western Texas and Mexico. Below the Allens is a calliope. He's our, she's our smallest hummingbird in North America. And they breed in British Columbia, Washington, Idaho, Oregon, Nevada, California, and east into Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. The next one is a broad-billed hummingbird, and you'll notice that one has a nice bright red bill, that adult male, and it breeds in southeast Arizona and throughout Mexico. 
And finally, the one next to it is called an Anna's hummingbird, and that breeds in southern British Columbia, southern Alaska, and the Baja of California into Texas, and it's quite a big bird. But any of these, you might have any of these birds in your yard because all these birds have been banded in the state of Tennessee. Currently, there are just under 300 winter hummingbirds that have been banded since November of 1999 when the first one was banded in Chattanooga. Each one of these little yellow dots represents um, where a winter bird was captured and banded and recorded for history. Um, and you'll notice that it's sort of around the metropolitan areas, but that's mostly because that's where we give our talks, that's where we do our festivals, and that's where most people leave up their feeders. But I encourage you to leave up a feeder, um, put it outside where you eat, uh, look first thing in the morning, uh, where you eat breakfast or out your bathroom window if you're going to check the weather, because that's when you're most likely to see a winter hummingbird because these winter hummingbirds act very different than our uh, ruby throats because it's usually only them. And they will have a roost, usually a conifer tree or something with, where they can get in and cover at night and that's where they'll sleep. And first thing in the morning they need to feed when they come off that roost. And they will come to your feeder and that is more likely the time you'll see them. Then or right before dark. And if you see one of those hummingbirds, I certainly hope that you will call Southeastern Avian Research and let us know that you have a bird. And then we would love to come to your house, ban that bird, and record that bird so it becomes part of our winter research study. So if you have, choose to leave your feeders up and you have a hummingbird after November 1st and before March 15th, I'd certainly love to hear from you.